happy Father's Day. And it was a beautiful day. Yesterday it rained all day. As soon as Mother's Day arrived, God put a rainbow in the sky. Let's stand for our Father. taken the world's darkness and recreated a world filled with the joy of light and hope. Restoring God, you have turned defeat into sudden victory and recreated a world filled with the joy of peace and solace. Renewing God, we respond to mighty deeds songs of praise, worship, and thankful prayer. You alone are God.
Somebody pray for me. Somebody, somebody pray. I'm on. Sing I'm on. I'm on the Lord's side. side. Come on, if you're on the Lord's side, just get up for us one time. Just say, sing, get up. Oh, no, sing. If you're on the Lord's side, repeat after me. Say, get up. 
If you on the Lord's side. So get up. If you on the Lord's side. If you on the Lord's side. Sing it up. Get up. If you on the Lord's side. If you on the Lord's side. Get up. Get up. If you on the Lord's side. If you on the Lord's side, if you on the Lord's side, sing I'm on the Lord, the Lord, the Lord side. Amen. Who's on the Lord's side? Get up. On the Lord's side, get up. Who's on the Lord's side? Get up. Who's on the Lord's side? Get up. Who's on the Lord's side? Get up. I'm on the Lord's side. Come on, get up. Sing, I'm on. I'm on. Amen. Did they sing it? I don't know how I know him. I think Charles got you on that rock for a minute. Boy. I thought you had the coolest rock in Buttonwood. The Charles got up there. Amen. That's some good walking music to call a pastor. Give him a little bit of that music if the pastor comes up and walks. Song says get up. Listen at this. The song says get up if you're on the lower side. How many people I got on the lower side today? All right, let's go. One, two, one, two, three. Get up. Hey, if you're on the lower side, if you're on the lower side, come on. Get up. Hey, if you're on the lower side, come on, come on. I'm on the Lord. I'm on. I'm on. Side. One more time. I am on the Lord's side. Y'all gonna say, I'm on. Two, three, and six. I'm on the Lord. The Lord's side. Side. Come on. Let's give God a praise. I'm on the Lord's side. Come on. Let's give God a praise. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's a mighty good guy. Oh, y'all making me want to have a little church up in here this morning. On Mother's Day. I'm on the Lord's side. No matter what it looks like, I'm on the Lord's side. Praise God. Amen. We just want to welcome everybody on today. We want to welcome all those that are watching via online. Let's just give God a hand, hand clap praise for these men right now. Amen. We got happy feet back there, which is my cousin. That's my real cousin, too, y'all. We grew up like brothers. You know what I mean? We were, remember, remember I told y'all I'm a pew baby? That's another one right there. That's the second pew baby. We was in the backseat of the car together all of our life, going to church. We ain't had no choice but to be playing music. And, and, and my brother, Anthony, Anthony right here. Come on, let's give him up. Let's give it up. And of course, our very own brother Joe Bree, amen. Doing a wonderful job on today. And on our man, come on, come on, y'all. Give it up for the man. I'm telling you, we're going to get Michael together after a little while, y'all. 
We thank God for those that are watching today via our social media components. If you could, right now while you're watching, if you could type into the chat room where you are actually uh, uh, viewing us from, what city, what church you're from, all that kind of good stuff. Also, if you don't have a church home, we want you to become a part of this great church called Buttonwood United Methodist Church, where we are the church that is uh, the church that is the bridge to this community that we help people become what they are going to become for God. In other words, we are that bridge that links this church and this community together so that you can become what God has called you to be. Amen. Amen. With that said, uh, we want you to become one of those bridges because we are all bridges in here. Amen. Amen. And we want you to become one of those bridges on today. So why don't you email me at pastor at buttonwoodumc.com and I will get back with you. If you don't, if you, if I don't get back with you, there's someone else that can get back with you. That is Yvonne. That's Y-B-O-N-N-E at buttonwoodumc.com. Uh, you can email her also and she will get back with you. We're so excited that you have joined us today on this women's, on this uh, uh, women's day, uh, I'm sorry, Mother's Day, <laughs> Mother's Day, and we're excited that you're here with us. Why don't you enjoy yourself in God today as we move on in our service. God bless. Amen, Pastor. You know, we were we were we were getting into that song so good. Yeah. I think when Cousin Nisi came in, she stopped at the door and dipped a little bit. <laughs> it's not gonna be our fault if we cause a traffic jam out in front of the church. <laughs> people stop out there and say, What's going on in there? Those people are acting crazy. <laughs> Amen. At this time we're gonna call Yvonne. That's Y V O N N E. Capital Y. Come up and give us our announcement. Let the church say amen. Wait, wait, wait. I don't know what this say I learned. <laughs> Process engineer, boy. Get your defects right. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> um, again, happy Mother's Day to everyone today. Um, for our announcements, first of all, we are so proud of our men. They did such a wonderful job. And the honorary one back here that don't know how to come to rehearsal. <laughs> yeah, I talked about you. The honorary member that don't come to rehearsal. Maybe that means maybe next month he'll be there. <laughs> Briefly for our announcements uh, for um, next Sunday, it will be the start state of the church address by Pastor Sean. Uh, that will be immediately after service. We will have some refreshments uh, first as Pastor then transitions from being doing the sermon to being ready to come forth to the church to tell us where we started from as of July 1 and where we are now. So we hope that everyone that comes to service will stay for that. On Tuesday, of course, at noontime is our Bible study. This Thursday at 6 o'clock will be the trustee meeting. Even if you are not a trustee of Buttonwood Church, that is an open meeting that anyone can attend. You cannot vote if there's voting in there if you're not a trustee. But please come out so you can find out exactly what the church is doing now and where we plan to be going in the future. And then on Saturday at 10 a.m. will be choir rehearsal. Um, and anyone that's out there that would still love to join us, we will always be glad to have you. Amen? And then just for today, um, the birthday is of uh, Kim's uh, granddaughter, Blessing. And how old is Blessing? 14 years old, good gracious. And on the 14th. So please give her our happy thanks to her. And please uh, always keep uh, listed um, in your prayers, all those that are listed on our second shut-in and each other in prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Yvonne. Let's all be guided by the announcements that you heard today. Now, as we move on, if we can ask our ushers to come forward for our offering. And as you know, you can give to Buttonwood in several different ways. You can give through Cash App, GiveLify, Give Today.
Our scripture lesson will be read from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. I'll be reading out of the New Revised Standard Version, so please stand for the reading of the gospel. John says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am, the I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. I'm going to ask the mighty men of Buttonwood to come back up here and give us a sermonic sermon, song, followed by the sermon by our past. Come on, man. I'm still here. 
troubles I've seen my share of troubles But I'm still here Bruises I've taken my lumps and bruises But I'm still here Loneliness I've had my share of loneliness, but I'm still here. Sing through it all, through it all. I made it through another day's journey. God's kept me here. Sing, I made it through. Sing, I made it through another day. God's kept me here. God's kept me here. Come on, sing it like you mean it. Sing, I made it through. I made it through. Another day. Another day. God's kept me here. God's kept me here. If you made it through, sing it like you believe it. I made it through. I made it through. Another day. God's kept me here. Lied on, many times I've been lied on, but I'm still here. Burdens I had to bear, so many burdens, but I'm still here. Dark days. I've had my share of dark days, but I'm still here. And disappointments, I've had so many disappointments, but I'm still here. Through it all, through it all, I made it another day. God's kept me here. I made it through, see. Another day. God's kept me here. Now, can y'all just stand to your feet and help me sing this next part? It just says like this I made it. Yes, I made it. I'm still here. Sing, I made it, say, I made it, yes, I made it, I'm still here, if you made it out of the storm, sing, I made it, say, I made it, yes, I made it, I'm still here, sing, I made it, say, I made it, Yes, I made it. I'm still here. One more time, sing. I made it. I made it. I made it. Yes, I made it. I'm still here. Last time, through it all. Through it all. I'm still here. About that for a moment. How many times we have almost didn't make it, but we made it. How many glad that you're still here? Go ahead, play a little bit, fellas.
another day's journey. I'm still here. Yeah, God kept me. Come on, y'all. I made it through another day's journey. Through it all. Mike straight now. There we go. Let's get my mic straight now. Happy Mother's Day to every mother that is here on today. Let's celebrate all our mothers on today. If you still have your mother with you, you should be celebrating her. Amen. Uh, so many of us have lost our mothers. And uh, with that said, um, you 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 miss the times uh, that you spend with your 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 mother. There's nothing like a calming of a mother. Seems like I called my mom. She always made everything all right. <laughs> you can call her and, and ask her anything, and she always has the solution. Even if she doesn't have the solution, Mama always got the what solution. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, to me it's a solution <laughs> and, and and she 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 uh my mom was uh was 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 that type of person that um you know she she always used to tell us sometimes i i, I used to, you know i wasn't given a voice like 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 uh like I gave y'all, but sometimes I wish y'all I didn't give y'all no voice because y'all sometimes talk too much and get a little disrespectful. <laughs> Cause she gave us a voice. She let us. She did. She she let us be be who we were within our in our moments, uh, and um, that was appreciative. And my mother taught me. She always said one thing. She said, Sean, there's something. There's one thing that I want you to never forget in your life. You always need some place to lay your head. <laughs> she said, and you always need to get back and forth to work. So what, what, that means you always got to have a, a home and you always got to have some transportation. <laughs> and she said, no matter what, you keep on making sure that you, that you got that going on in your life. Because you don't got no transportation. You don't got nowhere to get, go, get to your job. Amen. 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 So we thank God once again for all of you mothers. And uh, and every every just like we say that everyone isn't a father, everyone everyone is a good mo a father, everyone isn't a good mother either. So we thank God for the good mothers, Amen. Amen. That that have spent time uh, and have labored and has sacrificed. I think the biggest part of being a mother is the sacrifice. I used to I I did around I did around seven or eight albums with uh uh, uh Jay Cowell. Where I, uh, I was his, uh, his I, I produced some albums with him, and he used to do this one song called "One Day at a Time." Y'all remember that song? <laughs> and Jay Cowell, I would I would travel around the world with him, and we would go into these big coliseums, and 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 and, and he would he would start singing for the nine months. And I remember one time we was on the bus. I said, "You ain't never carried nobody nine months." <laughs> <laughs> but he would sing that song, and, and, and let me tell you, um, uh, that, that song has so many truths to it. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's, let us bow our heads for, uh, for some time of, of prayer. Father, we just pause on this Mother's Day Sunday to say, if it had not been for you, where would we be? We give you thanks and praise because in the midst of life, you always show up and you always show out just for us. Thank you because every mother in this place today have had some good days and had some bad days. They had a lot of hills to climb, but as the song says, they made it. So thank you for those that have made it through the hard times, made it through those rough times, made it through those times when they felt like 
they were going to give up. And in spite of giving up, they kept on moving. So thank you because we trust you today. We trust you in every situation and everything that we do. So it's preaching time now. So Father, let the preacher come. Father, take Sean out of Sean so that the people may hear your voice and hear your word. So we thank you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Scripture says in 1 Kings 17th chapter, uh, it is a bit of a lengthy scripture, uh, but for me to uh, properly uh, give you what God is saying today, let me read this lengthy scripture, uh, but this scripture has more to say uh, and proclaim than I will have to say within my entire message. Amen? Amen. Now Elijah, the Tishbite from Tishbe, said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, leave here, turn eastward and hide in Corinth Raven, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord told him. He went to Corinth Raven, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. <laughs> you know, that right there was enough to shout right there. So sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Go out once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I can have drink? As she was going to get it, he called and bring me, and bring me please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for my son and myself that we may eat and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up. And the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah told her. She was there. She, so there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry 
in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. For a moment, I want to tag this text with just a few words, and those few words are trust God first. Trust God first. I heard a story of a minister who was a pastor, and he pastored his church for several years, and the Lord called him to become an evangelist and travel the world. And be, being an evangelist is different than being a pastor because now you are itinerant. Whatever they give you from week to week is what you get. You don't have any set salaries. You don't have any, any way. You live by faith. So this man was, him, him and his wife, they decided, okay, this is how much uh, 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 I, 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 we need to, to, to make sure all of our bills are met, to make sure that our household needs are, are taken care of, which rounded about $5,000. He was doing well, things were going, engagements were coming in, and then all of a sudden, a drought came. And on about a year and a half into his his, his evangelism, he, he, his, his itinerant uh, uh, ministry, there was a drought. And around October, so a minister called him and said, I, 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 I have an a, a, a engagement that I want you to do. At the time where he had nothing and they didn't know what they were going to do and how they were going to pay the bills, he's asking God, what do I do next? You put me out here, how do I know, how can I trust you with what I'm going through right now? So he goes to the church, fairly large church he preaches at. And he flies in and church has one service and in between service the pastor and him were sitting back in the office and the, the pastor slides him an envelope and says, don't worry about anything while you're here. This is what we're blessing you with you all. all don't worry about anything. And, and back in those days, they had the the big chairs like we used to have in here. You remember when well, you couldn't see over top of nothing, you know? And uh, he uh, went out there for the second service. And, and while he was doing the service, he kind of, you know how we do. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what's, what's in here. Come on now. <laughs> Don't try to act like y'all ain't never did it. <laughs> see that he had blessed him with $5,000. Now understand something, this is not common. I done traveled all over the world, y'all, preaching and playing, and it's not common to get $5,000 to preach. A man sat there and said, oh, Lord, you have blessed me. Just what we needed, you have done. And as the man sat there and got up to preach, he said, you see the man over there in the corner? I want you to give him the $5,000. The preacher didn't have time to, to seek God and find out if this is his voice. He just simply got up there to preach and thought to himself, are you sure? <laughs> How many ever question God? Are you sure about that, God? <laughs> and as he mounted the sacred desk and began to preach, the Lord said to him again, that man over there, he once again said to the Lord, are you sure? <laughs> After the service, and things were going, and people were greeting the pastor, those that liked the pastor, because everybody don't greet the pastor, you know. <laughs> they came up and greeted him. And he whispered in the man's hand, and 
Y'all know back in the day they used to give, I call them Holy Ghost handshakes. <laughs> when you shake that hand and it was a little something in there. Y'all remember that back in the day? I call them Holy Ghost handshakes. Remember that mark the Holy Ghost handshake? <laughs> And the, man, and the man cried and he wept because what the evangelist didn't know that although he needed that money, that man needed more than he could ever imagine that he needed. Afterwards, he was about to go, but the staff and the pastor took this evangelist out to eat. And as they were out eating, one of the staffers from the church asked the gentleman, the evangelist, he said, did you know Brother John? He said, who was Brother John? I don't know what he's talking about. After service, you whispered something in a man's ear, and he started weeping and crying. And he said, oh, no, I don't, I don't know him. He said, well, as the man started weeping and crying, the Lord told me to do something for you. And he had a piece of paper and slipped a piece of paper to him and said, Look at this when you get on the plane. What he didn't know was that this was one of the farmers in the area, and this year their crops were up. He got on the plane and looked at what he gave him, and it was a check for $10,000. <laughs> Are you willing to trust God when he says to do something that goes against everything in your fiber because of your natural response to what you are going through in life. God says, go to the left. But you say, well, Lord, if I go to the right, this is, this is going to be over here, and I can get X, Y, Z done. I remember I felt like that before. God saying go one way, go, go one way, but yet you go the other. Well, on today, I want to talk to you today a little bit about trusting God. Amen. Trusting God. God has a way of extending his generosity towards us when we extend our trust to him. One thing about it is trust is, and we, we, we say this a lot, trust is, 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 is earned. Y'all remember heard that? You know, you, you earn my trust. But you don't have to earn your trust from God. You, he, all you got to be is obedient. There is a difference between obedience. Because it's not about whether you did something or whether you or whether you, you, you it's not about your works, but it's about your obedience to my word. Are y'all with me so far? Some of you say that. Today, this has nothing to do with what I am going through in my life. This has nothing uh, 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 to do. I showed up the wrong Mother's Day. I showed up the wrong time because this message has nothing to do with me. My finances are all right. Everything is going all right in my, ho my house and I don't have any issues. You, you, you don't think so, but economists are predicting that, that we're on the heels of this inflation where the gross, uh, uh, where gross domestic products are, fa are fa falling and failing. And, and, and what, what's about to happen is we're about to come into one of the greatest recessions again that we had when we had our last one. Y'all hear me? We don't know What's going to happen? These are just endless people who watch the market. They are the people who watch the numbers. They are the people who, who give us what's happening. What they're saying is there is a feeling of uncertainty. And that feeling of uncertainty is in the air when you look at your 401k plans and when you look at your retirements, and when you look at all these things, we tend to have uncertainty. Do you know how many friends I know have pulled so many stocks so far because they like, let me get this, my money out of here? Mm -hmm. 
So what happens is we begin to hold back and we begin to save. We begin to stash away because self-preservation begins to take place. That is one of our laws of nature, self-preservation. Preservation. I don't really care about how others fare. Just let me know about me and mine. And we get selfish with me and mine. But in those seasons, in the one which some of us find ourselves in too, we find that being selfish is not God's way. I want to warn you against our natural tendencies, your natural tendency to lean towards self-preservation. Your provision has never come from what you have been able to save. Your bounty has never come from the overflow of your crops or the overflow of what you have. But what you need most has never been on this price tag, but our God has supplied all of your needs according to his, come on now. Our God has a way of showing you that when we trust him, he goes above and beyond to meet every need that we have in our life. I'm talking about a God that will supply our needs. Now, we talk about trusting God a lot. So for that reason, today, I came to urge you to put God's plans before your plans to just God's process before you trust your own process. See, most of us, we trust third parties first. Well, I, I, gave, you, I, 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 I gave you a credit. Uh, we, trust, uh, 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 we trust God last. We'll call on our friends. We'll call on the newspaper. We'll call on our mother, our brother, our friend, our church. We'll call on everything and exhaust every resource to try to work it out ourselves before we call on the main source of all source, which is who? God himself. Think about it for a moment. We say with our mouth we trust them, but with our actions we show that we have no trust in the God of our salvation. That's the bad news today. You know, I, I bring good news, but I want you to know about the bad news. The bad news is that you got to change your thinking. The Bible says, let your mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So we have to renew our minds. Why don't you look at somebody and say, renew your mind. So we exhaust those resources trying to find and do what we do ourselves. Let me situate the application of this text. This isn't about merely our resources, but it's about the problems that we face. Don't get hung up in the resources that you don't realize it's about the problems that you face. Because this person's problem was resources, but you may have a problem with unforgiveness. You may have a problem with anger. Come on now. <laughs> I, could go, I could start going down the list with some of this stuff now. So we can't get caught up in the, the resource aspect of it more than the problem. Then your life trips across the domain of trouble and uncertainty. And don't go looking for anyone to solve your problem first. But 
we must first go to Christ that he can solve all of our problems. I want to pause for a little station identification to see if I'm the only person in here who has tripped into trouble. If I'm the only person in here who's ever come into something that you didn't see coming your way. If I'm the only person in here who has ever uh, 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 been uncertain about what to do next. If I have ever the only person in here that has ever felt like, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm uncertain about what to do next. I'm wondering if I'm the only one, if I'm by myself here, look to solve these problems on your own. But let me be the first carrier of some good news to let you know that rather than looking in the opposite direction, that you should be looking to God first. Because looking in the opposite direction, turning towards all the other resources first, is not the way that God intended. He intended us to look to him first. And that is the good news of this text. Yes. Yes. However, let me give you a little bit more to argue. Uh. Then I'll be out of your hair. Elijah was one of the most popular prophets of those days showing up on the scene. Notice that the Bible just says, and Elijah, so-and-so. It didn't say that Elijah, it didn't even tell us where Elijah came from. Notice that when it talks about David, it says David uh, was, 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 was a, a young child and grew up and did this and did that and did this. And then he became what he became. But it just says Elijah just showed up on the scene. And Elijah, come on, I got anybody in here read this book here? <laughs> What happens is Elijah just shows up. Elijah is from Tishba. We don't even know what Tishba is. <laughs> we still don't know what Tishba is. Where is Tishba? Can I tell you today that he shows up and he shows out no matter where we are in life? God has to give you something that is out of nowhere and it's one of those just like Elijah showed up out of nowhere God says I'm going to give you a lesson out of nowhere <laughs> this sermon that I that, that I'm preaching uh, uh, has to do with us trusting God when things come out of nowhere This man that shows up to this woman and says to them, bake me a cake. She says to him, in another version of the scripture, she says to him, but I have nothing. So what is, what, what, what is she saying? She first does not even look at what God has supplied for her. How many of us say that we have nothing, but yet God is still supplying every one of our needs? Amen. Oh, man. How many of us have, 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 have put aside for a moment and said, oh, I don't have, but look at what you do have. Yes. No, I may not have the fanciest car. No, I may not have the fanciest home. No, I may not have the fanciest clothes, but guess what? I'm still here. And I thank God for what he has given me. Y'all hearing me on today. I'm almost done. He said that he has nothing to do with that. 
But one thing about this scripture that is uh, important is that you have to be careful because Elijah was a bold person. He went into King. Let me let me read this. He went into he marched into King the King's house and points in, 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 in his face and says, "As the Lord God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except." At my word, he done told the king that ain't no rain going to happen unless I say it's going to rain. Now, somebody, imagine somebody come to me and say, something ain't happening unless I say it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> See, the problem with this was that Elisha, the king didn't know who Elisha was married to. I'm going somewhere with this. Some of y'all, some of y'all, some of y'all that, that know this word know where I'm going right now. <laughs> but for those that haven't been in church like like I've been a pew baby all of my life, let, let me let me let me let you understand something. That 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 he's married to to to, to this sister called Jezebel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he married to this sister called Jezebel for 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 if you don't know back when I grew up in church. <laughs> Cause I told you I was a pew baby. The saints would refer to some sisters as a Jezebel. <laughs> And, 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 and that 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 meant that that sister had a spirit that is contrary to the ways of the Lord. We going to say that in the in the good way. <laughs> in the nicest way that we can. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and not only was her spirit contrary, uh, you know, I I I I wish we could go back to you know that that back in the day that's the way that's the way the saints cussed at you from the Bible. They, they used the Bible. <laughs> that Jezebel spirit. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> that's, that's, the they, that's the way that's the way they told you all. You know what I mean? <laughs> they couldn't call you a hood rat. They couldn't call you a hoochie mama, but they didn't call you a Jezebel. <laughs> y'all keep it real now, y'all. All they said was just that Jezebel spirit. But they have. He is married to a, a idol worshiping, aggressive, conflicting, domineering personality. Now, if you're married on today, I need you to just keep looking at me. <laughs> Don't look at your spouse. See, because what happened is. Could you imagine how hard that was for him to go home to that every night? <laughs> However, I'm an equal opportunity preacher, and it could have been a man that was doing it also. At that particular time, that was the woman. Could you imagine how hard it could be to go home to a spouse that is aggressive, conflicting, and domineering? And if you're passive, they gonna punk you. <laughs> y'all hearing me here today? Oh, uh, y'all, y'all, y'all don't want to keep it real today. <laughs> That's what Ahab was dealing with. There was only one God to be worshipped, and his wife is leading a nation in rebellion against God. Could you imagine if you came into Buttonwood? And we're singing another deity besides God. That's what they were doing. Boy, if we came in the buttonwood and y'all y'all said, uh, what a mighty John we serve. Boy, let me tell you something. We'd be running out the door, wouldn't we? <laughs> what a mighty John. <laughs> Could you imagine showing up and folks singing these different deities? People worship Baal because... They could get something from God. They worship Baal because Baal 
was the magic genie. And the church has become just what they have become from Baal. We think that God is this magic genie that we pray, and whatever we pray for, God is obligated just to answer us, and God's going to do what we No, sometimes God says no. Now, that's the hard part about all this right here, because that's what us pastors are, pastors are guilty of teaching. God's going to do it. Whatever you say, if you may move, move that mountain, no. But God may want, not, he don't want that mountain to be moved, because he don't want you to see that stuff right now. No, I'm not going to remove that thing out of your situation, because I'm going to let that thorn be in your flesh so that you can learn what you need to learn. But yet we are, yeah, we think that God is a magic dean. Man, I watch this show called, what's that show called that I watch every night? I watch it every night too, y'all. <laughs> it's called, I'm almost done here. King of Queens. Doug and Carrie, Doug and Carrie, Doug and Carrie, Doug and Carrie. And they seen the priest one day and the priest talked them to go to church. I'm going to church. <laughs> So they get and they start to praying and they're praying in church. And he asked her, what'd you pray for? She was like, oh, I pray for these new Gucci shoes at the mall. That's all I said. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you're not supposed to be praying for that. You can't be praying for Gucci shoes. You can't be. She was like, why not? So then she comes home with the Gucci shoes. It was on sale. God answered my prayers. I'm ready to go pray for the new dress now. <laughs> You can't be using God as no magic genie. But that's what we do in church. We use him as a magic genie. Oh, whatever. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme, gimme. Then one day they was up there, Doug and Carrie, they was in the, he got mad with her. And he started trying to pray to counsel out her, her prayer. And she praying to counsel. He was like. <laughs> <laughs> they trying to pray to counsel. It don't work like that. Do you know? That before the foundation of the earth, everything that has been for, done for us has already been done. Your healing has been done. Your, your whatever you need has literally been done. I'm almost done. Sometimes I just need to teach it out, y'all. <laughs> Amen. So, Bell, they entered into idol worship, and I don't have time to finish up what I want to finish, but I'm going to end on a few marks, and then we're going to be done. God is much a God that he reserves the right to tell you no even when you sing his praises. Because we cannot be in idol worship, and there are two forms of idol worship here that I would deal with, and one is self-reliance, and two is self-satisfaction. Self-reliance and self-satisfaction. We worship self-reliance. God won't have any competition with any other gods, including myself. Because we make ourselves little G's. Oh, man, y'all ain't talking to me now. Whenever God doesn't give us all the goodies and God doesn't give us all the things that we praying for. And God, I need this house right now. But you know good and well this house, but you got about to be paid off. Now you about to go back in debt again. Stay where you at. And God is saying no. God isn't only at war with our idols, but God supplies an unlikely sources. Understand that the first thing that God said was, he's going to send some ravens to feed you. God Almighty. Ravens are ones that take. 
Ravens are ones that don't care. But he says, I'm going to send an unlikely source that's now going to bless you. Boy, I could run right there. That in the midst of when I'm thinking that it's the saints that's going to bless me, it's going to be the man that's standing on the corner that look like he ain't got nothing that says he's going to bless me. He may just bless me with a word that says, I need you to be encouraged on today. He may just bless me with just a smile. Y'all not hear me. But it's going to be the unlikely people, the unlikely choices that's going to bless you. All oh, these ravens was down there. They were swarming. But he said, the ravens is going to bless you. Oh, man, that right there is just enough to give God praise that I don't know where it's going to come from. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to be today, tomorrow, or after the end of the year. But whatever God is going to do, guess what? It's going to come from an unlikely source. My God. I'm about to close. God sends stuff right when you need it. He's able to give you what you need in the nick of time. One thing about the, the cartoons that I like is that back in the day, those cartoon characters <laughs> would get, and before you know it, they would, they would be walking like a regular, dressed like I am now, and then all of a sudden they'll go change, and at the speed of light, Clark Kenner be right there in the what? Nick of time. Oh, don't you know that the God that we serve is coming in the nick of time in your life? He's coming when everything seems like it's going to go down. Oh, he's coming when it seems like things are just down and out. The God that we serve is a God that is able to do it. And he does it by the unlikely choices. He does it by the individuals who are not like. What do you have in your hand? I don't have anything, Lord. Told that woman, go look again. See what you have. All I got is some wool and some flour. Holy Spirit just said, all you got in you is enough. Because we're looking for something huge. We're looking for something big. And he's saying, this is it. This is it. Buttonwood, this is it. What am I saying on today? As musicians, as you play softly, what am I saying today? I'm saying that when we look at this story, we got to put into perspective a few things. Number one, that God <laughs> Why y'all laughing? <laughs> they threw me off. You know, when I, all I hear is, man, I'm like, what's going on back here? <laughs> we have to understand that this story just tells us that our God is able to supply if we trust him. And we have to trust him to the place where we see no visible sight of him being able to be the God that is able to do it all. What do I mean by that? Man, they threw them three Hebrew boys in there, and guess what? They just was in there. They was fighting in that fire. And at the end, they said, it looks like I see somebody else in there. Who that in there? Could you imagine somebody telling you that we great throw you in the fire? Half of us, but oh Lord, just take me now. I'm done. And I'll probably be one of them with y'all. Oh, take me too. <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't be. 
because my mama taught me faith. <laughs> it's Mother's Day. She taught me faith to the place where I believe God for something that she, that she couldn't fathom in her head. I'm going to tell you a story. And this is a personal story. I'm going to tell you it's me. I usually try to make up other preachers' names when I'm talking about me. That story today wasn't about me either. So don't think that. <laughs> My mom prayed over me. I used to come home. I would check on my mom. Uh, I lived down North Carolina some time when I was home. I would be here. And then when I even moved back here, I would come. But I would come. I, I would come at the off hours. I'd come at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning to my mom's house. Check on her. Go in her room. I think I'm going to be checking on her. I'd come in there, and she'd be lighting that house up. Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus. She'd be in there praying. Oh, I mean, 2 o'clock in the morning. And I remember me and Cindy, uh, when we first got married, we moved with my mom. And I said, baby, I said, listen, let me tell you something about my mom. She had prayed with me. She said, my mom is too. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, baby, my mom's a praying woman. She said, my mom is too. I said, I'm going to tell you again. I said, I'm just going to give you a full warning. There's going to be some nights that we might not get some rest because she prays all night long. Man, that first night that Cindy heard my mom going there, she was like, what's that? <laughs> I said, I told you that my mom's a praying woman. And my mom would walk those floors. We had a three-story flat house, and she would walk through. See, this one is real, y'all, when you really trust God. She had three kids, raised them by herself. My grandma lived at the house with us. She had to supply all that. My mom couldn't fathom making what I make nowadays, and I ain't even making a lot of money. Y'all understand what I'm saying? But she always made sure every light was on. She always made sure that we had transportation. She always made sure that I was the sharpest dress. That's why I try to dress a little bit now, every now and then, y'all. <laughs> she used to go to the mannequin. They her, her and my mom and my, my aunt, my aunt Libby take me and Mark to the store, and then whatever we went, they buy them right off the mannequin for us. We be walking around sharp. I remember one time I had a mustard color suit, y'all. I thought I was something up in there. Walking there with a mustard color suit on. <laughs> I wore that thing to it, it was standing up. And I just <laughs> Let me tell you something though. You have to put your trust in God. And don't think that it's coming from your family, your friends or somebody else. Your encouragement may not come from them. Your blessing may, God going to use the, God going to use the ravens. Y'all hear me? Song simply says, I need you to survive. And we need each other to survive. I need you you need me. We are a part of what? God's family. Can you play a little bit of that for me, y'all? Yes. head bowed and every eye closed. First, we thank you, Lord, for learning to put our trust in you. To put our all in you. Not to call on you third or last, but to be the first source for every problem, every trial, every test that we go through in our life. Father, someone may have heard this message today and said, you know, may 
not be having financial problems. I may not be having this or that or other, but I do have something that I have to take to the Lord in prayer on today. Why? Because I want him to be my only source. Not the sources of what the government has, what the sources of what my job has. The so no, but you be my source, God. If that's you, I want to extend this altar to you on today in prayer. The altar is open for those who want to meet me down here on today. Secondly, if you don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sins on today it's nothing weird spooky or strange that happened but the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart the Lord Jesus Christ that you shall be saved today we want to make sure that your name is written into the Lamb's book of life it's done through right standing with God if that's you why don't you lift your hand on today? We want you to be a part of this fellowship of believers. Lastly, you may not have a church home on today. I believe that everyone should have a church home, and I think their church home should not be predicated on where your family goes or what or, or, or your friends go, but where God tells you to be, where you can grow spiritually, where you can connect with God and connect with people in a way like never before. So if this is the place for you to call your church home, to join this great community called Buttonwood today, even online, if this is you and you're watching right now, just type in the screen that you want to be a part of this community and we want to pray with you on today. Lastly, I'm going to ask everybody to stand. We're going to pray because we all have had a time in our life where we did not fully trust God in a situation. We all have stuff that we're going through right now on our jobs, in our homes, that we need to put our total trust in him. Why don't somebody shout, I trust God? Oh, that wasn't good enough. Shout again, say, I trust God. I'm going to shout it real loud this time. Say, I trust God. I trust God. Yeah, we trust him in everything that we do, Father. Father, we trust you right now. We trust you when we can't trace you. We trust you when we can't see you. We trust you when we don't know what you're up to, God. We trust you when we look like the floor has fallen out of, from us. We trust you when it looks like we lost everything. Father, I trust that you will bring me out and you'll bring me out on top. So no matter what circumstance or situation that we're in, thank you, Father, for being that God to us. Thank you, Father, for moving on our behalf. Thank you, Father, because all that we have, we're going to give you like the woman with the hole in the flower. So that means, Father, if you want me to wave my hand, I'm going to wave my hand. If you want me to shout hallelujah, I'm going to shout hallelujah. Oh, Father, whatever, however you want me, Father, I'm available to you, Father. Lord, I'm available to you to work on me as you will. So, Father, let me not be like those people who worship those idols and are in the self-care and do everything that is me, 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 but be all about you. So it's in the name of the one that is above all names, the name of Jesus Christ, that we pray. Let everybody say amen. Hallelujah. God is so good to us. As we are about to close and go home, we before we go home, we have a special Mother's Day uh, special that we're going to ask 
for those individuals who are in charge of that to come forward at this time. And after that, I will uh, do the benediction over us. <laughs> Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind. They took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. The songwriter said, my mother prayed for me, had me on her mind. She took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed for me. That was my mother's favorite song. And that song has been talked about all today in this service. So my family, Aunt Norma, Winsome, Kenyatta, and I, want to dedicate this part of the service to all of the ladies here in the church. Whether you are a mother or not, you have nurtured somebody. And we want to say thank you to you. So we're gonna have my niece come up first, Winsome, that will do a poem titled, Thank God for Mother's Love, followed then by a rap for uh, about a mother's struggle and sacrifice and then the victory by God's grace will be done by Kenyatta and then we have a song that Aunt Norma Kenyatta and I will sing to you amen try to sing Aunt Norma's death come on baby Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. There is no love like a mother's love, no stronger bond on earth like the precious bond that comes from God to a mother when she gives birth. A mother's love is forever strong, never changing for all time. And when her children need her most, a mother's love will shine. God bless these special mothers. God bless them, everyone, for all the tears and heartache and for all the special work that they've done. When her days on earth are over, a mother's love lives on through many generations with God's blessings on each one. Be thankful for our mothers, for they love with a higher love from the power God has given and the strength from up and above. about 20 years ago it's 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 a little rapish poem poemish but here it goes back in the day I didn't have a father it kind of worried me that the brother didn't bother to raise his kids like I thought he ought to he left it on my mom because he thought she couldn't afford to feed her or clothe her backs keep money in her pocket and keep us on track we were from the ghetto and things was kind of rough but I thank God for keeping moms tough. She's seen a whole lot of hard times, good times. She never had that day that she could unwind from all the stressfulness in her life. Yo, why that brother had to leave his wife? I wonder. We moved from the projects into a new hood. Everything was smooth, all our friends was cool, even in school from time to time. Yeah, we acted like fools. But then late at night, when everything was calm and everything seemed all right, our thoughts drifted back to our father. When he left our mother, the brother left no dollars. She had to fend for herself, reclaim herself, pick brand X names off the supermarket shelf. We were on welfare and people stared, but mom kept us clean because she cared. When she cried, when we sighed, we was right there standing side by side. A strong black woman, yeah, that's it. 
And you know darn well she didn't take no. I wonder. Moms is cool with us. She did everything from cuss to fuss to keep us in line, to keep us in order. She has two sons. She has one daughter. And every time that we try to act up, you know that she would try to crack that butt. And if you didn't like it, and if it bothered you, she never hesitated if she had to remind you. She's the one that cooked for you, cleaned, washed your stuff, and she took you to school. She's the one that worked those hard hours to make up for that lack of manpower. I give my mom props, y'all, because she's on top, y'all. I put her on a mantle because she's my example. So give the praise where the praise is due. If it wasn't for a mother's love, what would you do? I wonder. I wonder. M is for the million things she gave me. O means only that she's growing old. T is for the tears she shed to save me. H is for her heart of purest gold. E is for her eyes with love like shining. R means right and right she'll always be. Put them all together, they spell mother. is for the mercy she possesses. O means that I owe her all I own. T is for her tender sweet caresses. H is for her hands that made a home. E means everything she's done to help me. R means fragrant regular you Put them all together, they spell mother. The word that means the world to me. I want to thank the church family for accepting us singing that song. Now, I should know that song and do it very well, but I still don't. I learned this when I was a kid. We were going to uh, the Y in town on uh, Walnut Street. The Y's still there. And they had a ceremony, and they taught all of us this song about the mothers. And I want you to, t I'm going to tell you something about my daughter. I love her to death. I love all of them. The body's like mine, too. But Kenyatta is, and I'll say this, even if she's not here, she's beautiful, but she has kind of a, a rough exterior. <laughs> and I think that's because when she was, well, who said that? I know who said it. I think when she was coming up, okay, she was the baby girl. Her brother, she loved them. My grandmother, I mean, her grandmother, she adored. Now, I'm going to tell you something. My mother was working at a daycare one time, and this little girl had a problem, so the little girl was sitting on mama's lap. Here comes Kate. She was a little kid now in daycare. She knocked the child off on the floor. And she told the little girl, you get off my grandma's lap. That's my grandma. So mama said, baby, you, you can't do that. You, you just, she said, well, grandma, she's not your granddaughter. I'm your granddaughter. So I just want to tell you, she always loved her grandmama. Thank you.
And again, we just wish all the ladies here in the church a happy Mother's Day. And as you leave today, you know Tan and I always give out a special gift to all of the ladies in the church. So as you leave out, we will have your gift ready for you at the door. We hope that you truly do have a blessed day. Everyone here, always remember to love your parents, and especially the ones that brought us here into this earth. Amen? Amen. 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 We're standing on our feet. We're about to go home on. Amen. Is there anything else? Any any other announcements? something out of the word on today and that you will have a deeper trust with God on today you will have a deeper trust with God in your life on this week knowing that you have to depend solely on him and not other resources go to God first in every situation and see don't God work it out for you even if it's a no Amen. 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 Father, we thank you and we give you praise today for this congregation. I pray over each and every one's life that is gathered here, Father, that you may just bless them in a mighty way, Father. Let them trust in you, trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. So thank you for trusting you even when you say no. Thank you for trusting you when... Uh, the, the, the resources that we look to are not available, but you're the only resource that we should be looking to. So we give you all praise and give you all glory for what you're doing and going to do in each and every one of our lives. Now may the grace of, of our Father, sweet communion, the Spirit be with rest of the rule and abide with each and every one of us. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let everyone say, Amen. Amen. God bless you.